Okay, on this property right here, real quick. This guy wants this maple and looks like a Bradford pear trimmed up and just elevated up to about, you know, 15 feet. Those two right there, just to elevate all that scraggly stuff and branches on the bottom. Now, it's not scraggly, they're pretty big, but there is some scraggly stuff. 100 bucks for those two. This stuff growing over the driveway, not the spruce tree, but the tree next to it. See all these tips that's encroaching upon the driveway? Just trim all that up real quick, up to 20 feet. Uh, 50 bucks. Now, if you don't have a long pole saw that's a, an arborist chainsaw on a pole, you gotta climb it or use a pole saw and do it by hand, which is a lot harder. But I can do it by a pole saw real fast, 50 bucks. So you got 150 bucks right here. This whole fence line right here is all growing over with all these mulberry and sucker trees and all this stuff like crazy. He wants this whole fence line cleaned up. Everything you see removed growing on this side of the fence line. Cut all the way back. Now stump grinding is separate unless you want a stump grinding machine. I don't, so I refer that out to my friends. So this whole property line, uh, it's 250 just to clean up the fence line. And then you look here. This looks like a mulberry. It's called a big sucker tree to cut this all the way back to the base. Remove the whole thing, 100 bucks. Just remove this tree, do it fast. Cut that all the way to the base as low as possible. This right, he wants his spruce tree right here removed. It's higher than the highest telephone poles. It goes up uh, 10, 20, 30, yeah, that's 40 feet. Uh, this is normally true. I wouldn't do this no less than 400 bucks. Uh, what did I say, 350, because we're doing it part of the project. See how thick that is? If you don't do tree work, uh, this is nothing, it's easy. You just climb up the damn thing, drop all the branches, and work your way back down. If <laughs> you do tree work. Because, uh, no, I would not, I would not drop that. So 350 there. And then he wants that, uh, these maples trimmed up and elevated, all the scraggly stuff. You see the low stuff all the way up to about 40 feet. There's a bunch of dead wood way up at the tips of the trees he wants digging out. It's 250 for each of those. So we just racked up a bill of uh, 1350. And then I added on 10%, which was 1485 to do that. We do the whole thing in a day, leave firewood on property. Done. Dude, look at this house. What? Okay, that house is sick. That's my house. Screw working today, let's just go look at all the houses I want. All the houses we want. I don't want a house like that. I want a small house. I want a small house in the woods so I can hunt and fish whenever I want. All right, here we are on our way to the next quote. Look at these houses, man. What do these people do for a living? Jeez. I'm driving around for a half an hour because it sounded like the guy said Partridge Street and it was Park Ridge Street. So I was in the wrong side of the city. But anyways, this is a uh, wasp hornet nest removal. This is pretty rare, I get a call like this. Or once a year, I'll get a call from someone frantic on the phone. Will you please go up and save my cat? So, uh, it's pretty high up there. Let's see, we got 10. Uh, that's only 25 feet. But, damn. So that means I'd have to climb up to the top of this. It looks like uh, an oak. I don't know what it is. I can't tell without leaves on it. I'll come to the other side as you can see it. Oh, look at that little squirrel up there. Hey, buddy. It's fat. Got all types of nests up here. So, I'd have to climb all the way up to the top, tie in my ropes, and then ascend down. And just, I would just probably soak it in wasp killer spray, wait 10 minutes, then nip that branch and let it drop. Now, uh, I would like to relocate it somewhere, but I don't do that, so unfortunately I'll just have to drop it. What would I charge to get that? I wonder if I could stand on the roof and just knock it down with a pole. Uh, maybe. But for me, 
Uh, well, if I got to climb it, that's 250 bucks. If I get it from the roof, I don't know, 185 bucks. Now you think, oh, 85 bucks, you just knock it down. No. 185 bucks to up to 250. Alrighty. Here we go. I file it all away. There you go. Quick, I was just at a uh, tree quote. It doesn't matter, tree, landscape, whatever. The quote came out to 1350. So what I did is I I tacked on 20 percent. I said, uh, right. So I said I'll tack on 10 percent. I tacked on 10 percent, came up to 1485 instead of 1350. 1485, <clears throat> wrote it up, gave him the quote. And even as I was leaving, another guy was pulling up to give him a quote. I called him up just now, an hour later. I said, hey man, you mind tell me what that other company quoted you at? He said, yeah, they came in at 2200 But that was including stump grinding, so they would have been like, you know, 1800 And they were still way more than me. So you never know what another company is quoting, you know? You don't want to be the lowest company, you don't want to be the highest company, but if you could be right in the middle on that sweet spot, and you don't know until you do it. You just keep doing it, doing it, and doing it. See what I'm saying there? So, do you throw on an extra 10, 20%, because when it comes time where you gotta pay all the insurance and payroll taxes and all that stuff, which is ASAP right away, that's, you gotta cover all that. Because we're in this not to just survive, we're in this to live and thrive and make a living. We're professionals. Actually in Home Depot, because I want a real nice clipboard. I'm sick of the cheap ones that fall apart. See this nice heavy duty construction contractor landscaper clipboard. This is like what? It's only 15, 20 bucks. Yeah, I've been cheap for so long and not getting it. I'm getting it. But I don't like how it doesn't have a handle. I like how this has a handle, but you can't keep a lot in this. So it'll fall apart. It's flimsy. They got one with a handle. Because I know the DeWalt one, they got the big DeWalt ones with the handle. I'm going to go look and see if they got a DeWalt or something like that. If not, then I'll have to get this one. <laughs> Carry this with me. If they don't have it, I'll just throw this on a shelf. If, if they do. Yeah. Oh, but I do like how this opens up on the side like that. Oh, that's sick. You can keep business cards here. Oh, uh, I think I'm sold. What's this all about? Oh, sweet. Oh, this is sick. I'm getting excited about a clipboard. <laughs> yeah, I might just get this. Co, tear it up. Home Depot, I gotta take a quick glance to see if they might have like something that someone took back or something. Real cheap. Man, I ain't, I ain't buying no more unless it's still or the real good stuff. Yeah, I don't want to buy it no more. We'll cough up the money and get the good stuff. Alright, here we go. Oh, that's cool. I need no bag. Select your method of payment. I just run everything right through my business account. Alright, save all receipts. We're off. Yeah, buddy. Guys, uh, wife has the day off work, so before I get too swamped, I'm going to spend the day with her, take her out to lunch. We're going to go sit down with the mortgage guy about getting a house. Whew. I just want to live cheap. Like, I'm, like, eating rice and beans, man, and save up money until I'm a millionaire. I don't want to spend no money on nothing. All right, let's go. What up, what up? Being Sontag for lunch at the Conan yeah. Grill. <laughs> I'm interviewing your tall ass. On the way out of Kona. Yeah, on the way out of Kona Grill. Alright man, so put you on the spot. <laughs> this is Andrew Sontag. How old are you? Uh 27. 27. <laughs> you were an entrepreneur at what age? Um Probably had my first business at 18, I think. At 18. And what were you doing before you were 18 for your money? Um, just working in a bingo hall. <laughs> Weren't you flipping cars, too? Oh, no. No, I was. I started flipping cars when I was 18. So, yeah. And then 
So all your friends are stuck in cubicles and nine to five jobs, but it's the middle of the day and <laughs> how are we getting lunch? Because I don't work in a cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you do real estate, right? Yeah. Just got my real estate license. Rental real estate. Looking for a house to flip. <laughs> Flipping houses? Not yet, but looking for one. I should set it up and do a formal interview with you. I get the damn time. You should blog or vlog the entire um, first house that I flip. Where is it at, and when are you doing it? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for one. I'm trying to get one. I just put I put some offers um, this weekend, but none got accepted. So it's just a matter of getting one accepted. Okay, and don't you have a SEO optimization company too, where you do internet marketing? Uh, yeah, but. You don't want to do that. You want all residual yeah. income, right? <laughs> all real estate. That's all you talk about. And what's some of the best books you've ever read? Um, the first one's probably Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, that was the the tipping point, the one that set me over the edge. Um, I don't know, just all of his books and any book related to that, residual income and whatnot. <laughs> I can't and think of any other books on the spot. All this guy talks about, whenever we're talking on the phone or hanging out or anything, all he talks about is money and getting wealthy and getting rich and how to get wealthy as soon as possible. He's obsessed with wealth. He can't stand the 9 to 5 game. You happy? Yep. <laughs> Let's go see your Beamer. <laughs> Where'd you park on the other side? I parked on the other side. You don't even fit in Michigan. It's dirty. Why'd you buy a Beamer instead of like a, just a Chrysler 300? Everyone has a Chrysler 300. <laughs> what do you think, you're cool or something? No. German engineering. It's the best. Plus, it was just Chrysler 300 because I know how to buy cars. So, we got this young guy here who's an entrepreneur and he's flipping houses. Because you don't want to? But don't you already have a couple properties? We'll just invest in well, rental properties. Yeah. But How could someone get the ball rolling? And were you afraid when you first got started? Um, no, I wasn't afraid. To get the ball rolling, just save up a couple thousand dollars or borrow a couple thousand dollars and find someone to give you a land contract, which is a private loan. You don't need to qualify. There's no... But you still get financial stipulations. Ass wasted on the weekend. You yeah. still party, don't you? <laughs> still party every day. <laughs> <laughs> Drink to your accomplishments. <laughs> there you go. Hey, on the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, instead of dumping uh, ice on your head, <laughs> yes, you I drink. I did a shot. So. There you go. You did a shot. <laughs> All right, man. I hate using public bathrooms. It's disgusting. I'm a total germ freak, so I make a whole nest of toilet paper all the way around the seat. And then every time you have to use a public bathroom, there's 10 stalls, and some goofy douche has to come sit right next to you, and you can see his damn boots. I hate it. Okay, on this property right here, real quick, 